frighten you. Because demons are real. Amen. I know that I know you don't you I'm not trying to go there. I passed out, I'm not trying to hear all that. You better hear it. Demons are real. The devil is real. And if you and I understand a little bit about how the enemy works on us and those around us, we'd understand a little bit about people. Why do they keep treating me like that? A demon is bothering them. A demon is influencing them to help them or to cause people to act a certain way. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. What does that word oppress mean? Oppress means to exercise harsh control over one, to use one's power against. The devil is exercising harsh control over areas of our lives, and he's using his power to influence certain things that we do. Now let me make it clear. Listen to me. As a Christian, you cannot be demon possessed. As a child of God, you and I cannot be demon possessed. It's impossible. You cannot have the Holy Spirit living in you and a demon living in you at the same time. Amen? It just doesn't work like that. You cannot be demon-possessed and be a child of God. You can be demon-oppressed as a child of God. See, the devil, he doesn't care if you're God's child or not. Amen? He doesn't care about that. He doesn't care how often you come to church. He doesn't care whether you sing in the choir. He doesn't care if you teach Bible study. The devil doesn't care what you do or say unless you're doing or saying it out of the word to bring him into subjection to King Jesus. So, uh, we cannot be demon possessed, but we can be demon oppressed. Some of us. The things that are going on in our lives, the things that we're struggling with, the things that are going through uh, our circumstances and situations are being caused by demonic warfare. We might not want to acknowledge it, but it's there. There's four levels of spiritual warfare that we're going to talk about. Now, first of all, even before I look at that, one of the things that you and I need to understand is that Jesus gave us power <coughs> over demons. Amen? Amen. In, in the name of Jesus, we have power over demonic forces. Look, look at Mark chapter 16 and verse 15. Mark chapter 16 and verse 15. Mark chapter 16 and verse 15. You have to say amen. amen. And he said to them, he being Jesus, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, what will they do? They will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will not hurt them. And they will lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. 
Look at Luke chapter 10. So Jesus here commissions his disciples and he says, these signs, these miracles will follow those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons. Luke chapter 10. Look at verse 19. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means harm you. You see that? Go back up to chapter 9 of Luke. Then verse 1, then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over what? All demons and to cure diseases. He sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. It's interesting that when Jesus sent his disciples out, he always sent them out with power, watch this now, to cast out demons with power to cast out demons. Now, you look at the fact that he was sending them not to church people, but to people that weren't saved. Amen? He was sending them out to, 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 to spread the gospel, and one of the things he was saying is that when you're going forward, I want you to cast out demons because these people are possessed by demons. But as Christians, he never sent the church out, watch this now, to cast demons out of believers. He sent people forth to pray and to send deliverance to those who were oppressed by demons. You with me? All right, so, one of the first things that you and I need to realize when it comes to demonic warfare, is that you are under attack. Amen? You're under attack of the enemy. You're under attack by demons. I want to come back to this one. What kind of demons? Well, there's 12 classes of evil spirits. There's 12 classes of demons that are out there that you and I are under attack of. A spirit of heaviness? Where did that come from? Where does that come from? Say, say that. You know it don't come from God. God doesn't give us a spirit of heaviness. You have a spirit of heaviness. You just, I just don't know why I feel the way I feel all the time. I, 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 just, I just have this spirit of heaviness, spirit of jealousy. Where did that come from? Oh, okay, and understand, it's a spirit. I don't know why they act like that. They're the demon. Amen? And there's a demon whose job it is to do things and influence things to make Marilyn jealous. That's, that's that demon's job. Okay? Shows up for work every day. What are you going to do today? I'm going to make Marilyn jealous. That demon shows up every day. Lying spirit. Where did that come from? The devil. Say that. The devil. I, I, you know, they would rather lie than breathe. I don't know why they lie like that. It's a demon spirit of lying that's there to oppress. You ever run into people they just lie? You just don't know why they lie. Yeah. Wow. They, they lie when they don't have a reason to lie. Come on, somebody. And you wonder, what, what, why do they do that? Familiar spirits? Seances? Black magic? Perverse spirits? Yeah, yeah, witchcraft, familiar spirit, that's witchcraft. Perverse spirit, what makes, what would make 
What would make an adult abuse sexually a baby? I mean, think about this. The, you know, nothing can make your brain functioning normally do something like that. Spirits of pride and haughtiness, spirits of boredom, spirits of infirmity, somebody, people that are always sick, always sick, always sick. Spirit. A deaf and dumb spirit. <laughs> I'm serious. 12 classifications, 12 classes of, demon, of evil spirit. Now, that doesn't mean that everyone that's slow is demon possessed. But there are people who have spirits that are deaf and dumb or slow spirits that bother people mentally. Okay? Now, I need to say this so women will understand. When he can't hear you, it might not be a spirit. Thank you. Tom's looking at me like, no, Pastor, you didn't say that. That, that might not be a spirit. He just might not want to hear what you're trying to say right now. Spirit of fear, spirit of bondage, and spirit of the Antichrist. All these are classes of evil spirit. And, and, and I'm going to show you how those break down. Uh, but there's four levels that these demon spirits attack you at. The first level is when demons move in for an attack with no legal right to be able to do so. What do you mean by that? Demons, for the most part, have no legal right to attack you. Satan had no legal right to attack you. Why? Because Jesus has already defeated Satan. The blood of Jesus has already healed us and, and set us free. Satan has no legal right. When Jesus hung on Calvary and was wounded for our transgressions, and bruised for our iniquity, he paid the price for our sins, he bore our sins on the cross. That broke Satan's power. And he had no legal right to influence us. That's why Jesus had to come to earth as a man. Adam lost the power to Satan legally as a man. Jesus had to get the power back legally as a man. That broke Satan's power. So the first level is when demons move in for an attack with no legal right to be able to do so. All right? In that case, what do you and I need to do? We need to stand on our legal right in accordance with the word of God and declare to Satan and his demons that they have no right, they have no legal authority to be here and stand on the word of God and literally tell Satan what the Bible says about his legal rights and his legal limits. We need to enforce Satan's defeat.